will know magnanimity this is part of our work and ladakh is very dear to us as is other parts of jnk uh earlier in the day i was uh, i had a little quality time with the lieutenant governor of ladakh le and i told him that in this building we have a room called the soker room soker is a, a brackish water and a fresh water lake in ladakh unique ecosystem and one of the ones that are under great threat something similar to what sonam was talking about and uh, we can talk about it for a week when we d- talk about natural areas and all these places so i thank you for inviting me to uh, address this i'll be brief and i'll be abstract because i think we need to move from uh, in, in a lot of ways the kind of dreams that we have as indians about our country and the kind of uh, you know desires that we want to see it go and somehow talk about things that could be possible and be solvable and all that but before that i'd just say that uh, a few things uh, uh, sonam talked about water in the sky and this is a magic land where if you go with a completely different uh, vision you see things that you don't see elsewhere in a very casual way on the middle of the highway you'll see uh <clears throat> archaeological uh art uh rock art going back about a thousand years being used for various purposes including for showing you the way where to go and uh, these areas which are actually specialized places for tourism and need to be conserved even more than lots of other uh, areas in uh, the great land of our country um there are very few of them that are actually known about there are uh, ibex carved into the rock next to the Indu- indus more or less the same way as it would have been 2 and a half thousand years ago and that meant something that meant that people were able to go there live there sustainably were able to use that not just as trade routes but also places of settlement now in this entire thing uh i have uh i have uh, one aspect which is that we have cultural foundations in these places all of india we also have national necessities of what we want to do how we want to defend ourselves what is our what is our problem on in in that particular geography on the left the right and the north so when we talk about footprint related to the defense of our country i think we should make three times that effort to be able to somehow neutralize it because we cannot do without certain energy systems defense systems there will be waste i mean there is no end to stories on the siachen and somehow we must very quickly look at solutions how this could be offset because uh, we've been talking about all this we we know the issues we know all this we have studies we have we know about it we also know what solutions are required for that purpose but there is very little action and i think now with the change and now with uh, a new sort of vision perhaps we can bring these solutions to people and some of these <coughs> uh some of these are feasible and it, it can be done in the short run so uh and one thing i would say i mean you talked about uh, um you know archaeological and heritage related issues and we have this dda case with the um with this uh, town planning issue down next to tuglakabad fort we have a substation and uh, you know real zonky uh, electric evacuation tars i faced this several times once with the national board of wildlife we i went into a valley in the himalayas and there was this you know olympic class heidel pass station being built and above that was another olympic class that had been built at the run of the river now these were nearing completion the evacuation was about 60 kilometers down near the plains so that is built this is built and the villain of the piece is the national board for wildlife because the wildlife approval for evacuating that power across the power lines has not been taken despite the fact this is a public investment of thousands of crores has gone into it 
And we have said, this is fait accompli, guys. So what if it moves through a top class wildlife sanctuary? You have to say yes. And under what circumstances will, would, would we, the country that is deprived of power and requires renewable energy for its power, would say no. No matter what safeguards you bring in, these are issues that we can do without. If it is a financed project, it would not have succeeded. So there are several such examples. So even firstly in the planning of sustainable development in the state, in state of JNK and the current dispensation, I think we should try and get away from this and, and do things in a different way so that we plan this correctly. Uh, I'm, I'd be very practical about certain things. Sometimes when, you know, we see the economic situation in, in, uh, in uh, Jammu, Kashmir, and Ladakh, and we want to do better for it. Some things which are never discussed. Sustainability works as much as the ability to be able to meet the requirements of suppliers and, and, and to reach the markets that are required. I talk from some experience by saying that if we want to strengthen some of the smaller industries, the handloom sector, all these areas, we need to strengthen the supply lines out of places like Amritsar and Jammu. All thread, all hoisery related material, a lot of raw material comes from Amritsar. It's not maybe manufacturing it. Ludhiana and Amritsar are places from which this moves through. On the other side, Aggregation before it is transported out is sometimes done in Jammu. It takes very little for us in our different departments and divisions and local government to improve those 10 or 15 things that are required on a very minor scale to be able to open up these doors. Ultimately, a lot of it depends on very small things. You cannot make a shawl or you cannot make something that uh, without having proper thread. And if you want sustainable thread, you need proper thread which is not made of nylon or has the special qualities of silk, etc. You have to go to a specialized market. That merchant requires you to make some changes which are within the law of the country. He's not going to you know, go around the, uh, the direct tax or something like that. He just needs some small things. To be able to make that uh, the, the invoice and to make sure that that invoice has a receiving system at both these stages. It's very essential to do this. Number two, this idea of micro solutions, fantastic. So there's a lot of people here sitting here who are, I would say, below 30. If you can come up with, in your cohorts and groups, micro solutions for certain, and we can tabulate it, notify it, advise the government that these are things that are required, then we would have produced something of value in this group and in this session. And we are just talking about what from our experience and background and all that. But a lot of it, and we can make think, not think tanks, but action tanks to say these five, ten things are possible, let's do it. Next point. At lunchtime, we talked about something called a garlic, which is supposed to be the, you know, gold medal garlic in India is called the Doda garlic. Apparently, it has one pod. And that pod, and this, this is very, very important. And I was told that it's not available in, uh, in easily. Now, I got in touch with someone. He said the only place you can really get in a regular supply is the Gram Udyog supply through the, Lokman, the, 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 the building behind Khan Market. I didn't know this. And why should it be only in the government supply system? Why should it not be? If this is so special to us, I don't know. Maybe it should be on our, uh, you know, uh, on Amazon or Flipkart or, you know, whatever it is. And it should be popularized here because the people from Doda and those areas would actually benefit from it as they, they have done or, or people in several areas can and are doing. The aspect of nature-based solutions, there are two parts to it. Above a certain height, the, I see very little investment in agriculture, in, in practices. It's not just relating to water, as was mentioned. It's also what are the kinds of inputs we require to be able to you know, uh, make this sustainably, uh, take it forward. Bali was mentioned as one of the reasons of our sustenance in the past. 
and this is the reason perhaps I think to some extent that the hops industry that came into Lahol, uh, Lahol Valley because it started supplying all, and then it collapsed after some time and all that. So if we can look at this as a long-term solution, think of 30 or 40 year solutions for that particular thing. Supply lines will be established, people will be able to reach uh, those products and there will be confidence building in the system. Next point. I've always thought that uh, ecological security is as important as national security. And particularly when you look at peninsula India and other areas, and of course our border aspect. Now this ecological security has a certain stage and one of the stages of this is that if we try and overmanage it, if we try and overmanage, for instance, a, a border area in, uh, in, in, in Jammu or um, parts of Ladakh and Kargil and all that, uh, we would disturb a different foundation. One is the cultural foundation within which it is built. The ability of that area to manage or to maintain such a population group without having to upset the, uh, the, the footprint from the outside of uh, the geography. And thirdly, we'll be bringing in practices there that would not be sustainable. Now, all these three things we need to, I'm, I'm not saying that we can solve it here, but perhaps through the forum that we have, but perhaps through Balipara Foundation and others, let's think of solutions. You know, of these which we see, the great minds in this room. I've never been able to reconcile, for instance, the fact that how are we going to meet the cultural foundation of some of our areas with the future of artificial intelligence that's coming on to us? The two may not be synchronous to us at this point of time, but it's going to hit us one day. Because uh, a large number of service jobs are being threatened in the Western world. It may not have the same effect here. Ultimately, it will have some effect. For us, our country, our geography, our regions, our districts, we need every job in India that we can you know, uh, sustain. And this will have an effect. So I'd suggest that we should really, you know, rather than expressing uh, uh, solutions in a place like this, let's maybe make a brief paper of these suggestions. We have some great minds who can do this and uh, take it forward, which would also be sustainable would also have all the environment and ecological aspects into it. Because I feel this is one of the areas which is seldom seen as, a, as an aspect of threat or it's, it's, it's a challenge. Next point. When we talk about solutions and capacities and all that, and people like Sonam have developed so much capacity in different areas, one area which I feel is missing, whether it is Delhi, I'm, you know, I've seen this in Leh, I've, to some extent in the Jammu area. Disaster management. There are two aspects of disaster management. One is the uh, institution that the government of India has established, both at national and at state level. They are much better off now than they were maybe five, six, seven years ago, or 10 years ago. They're much better off today. They have protocols, they have some investment of transportation, communication. And we have seen the response in the tsunami and the, we've seen it in different parts of India. What we are not prepared is we do not have those kind of civilian cohorts that used to be there in my time. When I say my time, I'm talking about NCC and I'm talking about you know, the 60s and stuff like that, where we, civil, defense, civil defense cohorts were there and we were trained to undertake any uh, disruption uh, or earthquake or some, you know, anything. The how to get together, who to inform, what to do, how to evacuate and things like that. And I think we need to develop this because it also gives people a great respect in their, in their ability to do something for the rest of the world in case something like this happens. Most of the disaster related uh, incidents that we have faced in my organization have been, the response from the non-government side has been mainly on an individual or a very small, maybe two or three people acting together, completely untrained. They won't know where to put a splint if somebody's got a fracture. They won't know how or what to extract uh, in order to drink in, in, in case there is no water and things like that. So basics and train, retrain. 
And perhaps this could also be an area where services would be uh, required. Whenever I think of the Indus, uh, you know, Ladakh, uh, cracking low temperatures right now, all that, I'd like you to think of one aspect. A few years ago, three, four years ago, my team photographed Eurasian otters on the Indus. In a part, I, I, I'm sorry, I will not be able to tell you the location for certain reasons, but they are very much close to a broad part of the Indus, somewhere near Leh, let's say. These otters, there are two aspects to it. These are otters that are in part of Asia and of course in Europe. And think of the time of the earth when this creature evolved and populated the streams of lots of these places. Maybe it was there in our country before the island of India hit the landmass of Eurasia. Somebody mentioned it earlier. Maybe, we don't really know. But the fact is it is there today. And in this weather, when the Indus has frozen over three to four feet, yeah, it survives, it breeds, and it's there. It's there for science, it's there for conservation. So the two are the two things here. One is, there's fish in the river, that's why it survives. This fish needs to be conserved, preserved, retrained sustainably. Don't fish everything out of there. And therefore, certain stretches of the Indus, for the value of the future, we need to train, retrain, and make those pools sort of, I won't say inviolate, but certainly keep them clean out of the threat. And this will have a tremendous amount of upstream and downstream benefits for everybody. Because species are an indicator. They are not just there just for their own uh, you know, future career development. They are, this is an indicator. And to have an otter, a Eurasian otter, in my country, up there, in Ladakh, is, a, you know, is, is for naturalists, is really top class stuff. So think about it. There's another dimension to it. We are not sharing this world just for ourselves. Another dimension, there is there's the wildlife, there's the kiang, there is the uh, black neck crane, there's you know, the hangul, all these creatures, the snow leopard, and how we can help them uh, to, to, to go forward together with us. Last point, or maybe second last point, last point. Uh, we have developed, a, uh, for reasons of conservation and through the inputs received by communities in, in, in Ladakh and Kargil, um, predator-proof corals for shepherds. So the sheep do not get attacked by the snow leopard. Okay? I'm giving you the short version. Snow, snow leopard walks into this place, panics. Instead of killing one goat or one sheep, Kills 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 30 of them. So this person is wiped out. And in order to protect it, a simple mesh, which is partly inside, partly outside, low cost, uh, is great to help these people. So we've developed 100 of them. As a result of the work that we have, my team has done, and Pankaj Chandan is sitting here from uh, heading the team, the government has and will take forward this for the entire state entire state of uh, Ladakh. Yeah? Now, as a result of this, the snow leopard will have a tough time for some time. But some other things will develop which will help all this. You know, economy will develop, people stop getting into some places. The issue has to be studied over a period of time and all that. But this led, led us to one thing, and I would request you to please find some solutions for this in your mind as well. The culture of pastoralism in our country is prevalent everywhere. We are protecting sheep, but this comes from a request from the pastoralists that we need our lifestyle and we need to go forward in the way that some of this can be sustained. Keep our grasslands alive. You know, predation should be less. Do not encroach on our fields by parking trucks on them in the time when, you know, our lands are gone. Now, this is not just an issue in Ladakh. It's also an issue in Jammu and in Kashmir where shepherds who are the people who know 
the earth, they, who know the land, they know the interactions uh, exist and they have tremendous value for many things. By the way, General Saab is sitting here, some of the early warning systems in our country when the, you know, the uh, enemy encroaches on our borders in different parts of the world are actually relayed back to our army by shepherds, Bakarwals. When in mountaineering days, whenever we went up into certain areas, the first person who'd give you a warning about weather, landslide, or would help in evacuation in terms of emergency was a Bakarwal. And these are great people. We need to help them to maintain their cultural identities and their, you know, so working on grassland, working on uh, these areas. And those are systems that can sustain themselves. Those are pure nature-based systems which belong in, and there are solutions. And all of us, many of us with experience can come up with these solutions. Uh, I mean, there's lots to talk about. The fact that I believe that fruit should be put on the table, the fruit of JNK in Ladakh, there's so much is there and you know the cold storages we've been talking about for 50 years, this chain of cold storage, etc. I mean, we, we should get on with it, even if it is, means long-term investments on a deferred basis. We have, to, we have to put this fruit on the table. So you mentioned um, 12,000 crores worth of uh, one particular crop. I mean, I think you mentioned apple. And just imagine what else could be there, you know, with apricots and dry fruits and lots of other things. Which is the, it's an open door. Once it opens up, it's a tremendous amount of, you know, <clears throat> we're the largest banana producing nation on earth. 30% of the banana comes to you on the, on the table. Now, there's not, I mean, we can change this thing completely on the agro scene if you look at it at that point of view. <clears throat> Lastly, Sonam, sorry, there's so much more to talk about, urban planning. I have seen a map of Srinagar in the museum of uh, the Victorian Albert Museum in London. The map was about half the size of this. It's on a carpet. And it shows you where the jhelum and how it has to flow and this part you cannot build on and this is the wooler and this is the dal, etc. And that map I tried to, unsuccessfully, but I managed somehow, to sweep, superimpose with a modern map of Kashmir, uh, of, of Srinagar. And the reasons for flooding of Srinagar and those disasters are right there. Where we should have built, where we should not have built, what we should have done, all the solutions are there. You just have to see. <clears throat> I can go on. Construction in Ladakh takes three years to build a build a army residential area because the cement gives us only three months to settle. And therefore the construction aspect, the investment in Cement of the kind that will work in that kind of areas. I mean, these are issues that we need to do somehow and, and work through. Anyway, sorry, I'll have to keep quiet uh, because I've said so much. Sports, my God. Combining sports, the Snow Leopard Football Club, which I don't know how many of you know about this. The Snow Leopard Football Club is something Srinagar uh, is uh, run by somebody who is from my college. I, you know, these kind of things will bring out so much initiative in our country. And there's so much to say and do. So I'll stop here. One last word. Sonam. CC Kyo Kyo Lar Gyalo. What does that mean? You tell us. May the gods prevail. The truth prevail. Ultimately, the truth will prevail. Ultimately, God's will will prevail. So this is what the Ladakhis say. When they stand on the, when the wind blowing and sometimes, you know, the good... Things have happened, or you want a good start, they shout into the wind, CC, Kyokyo, Largyalo. This is what I shout back to you. Thank you.